Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Now today's video is going to be on how to make the uh, Creality CR6 SE quieter by adding some quiet fans. Um, we're going to be using these four parts I've just printed on it. And these two Noctua fans and a book converter. Now, the reason being, um, two, three years ago, when I first built this shed, I bought a Creality CR10 Mini printer and I printed tons and tons of stuff on it and, and I loved it. Novelty wear, wore off a bit and they sort of like neglected it really, shoved it in a corner and got interested in, in other things. Started this YouTube channel and stuff like that. So recently my daughter asked me to print something else, something for her, her son, my grandson, a holder for his uh, Xbox controller. So I dug it out of retirement, plugged it all in, reassociated myself with it, got familiar with it again, and it worked again great out of the book. And I got the bug, the printing bug again. So what I'm going to do, I've, I've, that's now back in storage in the observatory behind me, and that'll be going to my daughter. And I've since then bought a Creality CR6 SE printer. Now, I'm aware there was some early problems with the first, it was started on a crowdfunding project, and some of the early batch did have a faulty power switch, which was, and I believe a motherboard as well, which was everybody raving about it's a, a likely cause of fire. Well, I believe them problems have been solved now. Um, like I said, I've only had it about two or three weeks. So far, it's performed flawlessly. So I'm not saying it's perfect yet. Um, I haven't had it long enough. I've, I've joined one of the forums and I have read quite a few messages on there that some people have had problems. Like I, said, I had problems with me mini and stuff like that. I sorted them out. It's like a constant project if you own a 3D printer, updating them, keeping on top of them and all sorts. So I can't say long term whether it's going to be great or not. All I can say is so far it has performed fantastically. The print quality is brilliant it's really really quiet apart from the fans i mean one of the prints i did on it was this and i don't know if you can see the sort of the quality of the, uh, of the print and it's it's really really smooth and these parts i've just printed for this project we're going to be doing today you can see there's one line across the top there but generally you know, it is really, really smooth. So I'm really pleased with the quality of the print so far. And like I said, the only thing that lets it down is the fan noise. Now, like I said, I did update all the fans on the CR10 Mini. I'll show you that now. So like I say, I've got this fantastic observatory here. All these great telescopes, but not being used at the moment. It's just a storeroom for all this stuff. But here is the CR10 Mini. And as you can see, I've printed on this loads of uh, upgrades. It's got a different part cooler there with a Noctua fan. And I put all the quietening bushes in and everything. And on this one, you can see it's got the much bigger fan. Is that 120 mil? Is it something like that? Because on the CR10, the whole control box is one part. So instead of the two separate fans that were in there, you can just put this printed base on and this huge Noctua. And again, it kept it icy cool and you just could not hear it so that was my old one so as you can see i already made that quiet took all the noisy fans out replaced it with knock two as ages and ages ago and so i want to do the same with this so i posted a question on the facebook page the cr6 uh, facebook page and it was answered very quickly by a guy called matt tully 
who gave me a really um, full uh, reply telling me how he'd updated his and everything and he was going to update upload some files to Thingiverse. Well, he's done that now. And uh, like I said, these are the files. They're built to take these new Noctua fans, um, the deeper. So I'm going to have to raise the uh, printer as well. I'm going to be printing some extended legs for that. I'm still looking into that. And one of the fans um, is, the existing fans is 24 volt. So you need these things called book converters which will convert um, the 24 volt output down to 12 volts for one of these Noctua fans. The other one's 12 volts already, so I won't need one on them. So I'll just show you the fans and then parts that I got off Amazon now. Okay, so here's the uh, order I got off Amazon. These are the fans I got, these Noctua NF dash a eight u l n ultra quiet fans you can see there's all the bits you get in the box you get the four uh, screws to mount it there these adapter leads the rubber mounting pins which we won't be using and uh, all the bits you need they're not cheap at 19 pound 16 each uh, nothing ever is off noctua it is slightly overpriced if you ask me but and a horrible colour as well, but we don't see that, so that's all right. But uh, it, they are good quality fans, and uh, a bit of peace and quiet is worth any amount of money. So these are 18 millimetres, as you see, and they're uh, 19 quid each off Amazon. You may get them cheaper elsewhere, I don't know. And uh, they're the fans. Now, you will also need say, these, which I'll be showing you later exactly what these do. Does the motherboard fan is 24 volts as standard the output to the fan from the motherboard is 24 volts so that knock to a fan is 12 volts we need to transfer that transform that 24 volts into 12 volts so you need these things called book converters or step down power supply and uh, you see there at the top that's the negative the uh, negative input and the positive is above that behind the capacitor and then there's the output to your new fan so i'll be explaining how to fit these later i was just going to buy one but i couldn't find one single one but it's only seven quid for six of them so uh, you get six in the pack and some wire as well so i believe the, uh, the hot end fan or the uh, part cooling fan is 24 volts as well so i would need one of these if i ever swap that but uh, six seven quid for all that is pretty cheap so they're the parts off amazon here on um, thingiverse is the files that matt uploaded this is the file there's quite a few different fan covers and and uh, PSU covers, motherboard covers and that on Thingiverse. But this was the ones uploaded by Matt himself. He was kind enough to uh, go through great instructions. And here in the summary, it's really detailed, which is much appreciated because most of the stuff you see on Thingiverse is no instructions or anything. So it goes through everything you need to know there to print it off and what they do. And these are them in place. As you see, he's used some sort of like plastic nuts to secure them. Then there, I just use the screws that came with the Noctua fans. But uh, you can see the thing and the covers on it. So they're the printed parts you will need from Thingiverse. Just click up there, uh, download them, and. Uh, print them as per instructions so again a uh, big thanks to uh, to matt for that and um i'm going to show you first of all the sound levels with the existing fans the noisiest fan is the one on the um the main motherboard the one on the power supply is reasonably noisy but it, the other one is way noisier 
So I've measured both output levels with a dB meter and a microphone in the same place. And I'm going to put them in exactly the same place once I've done this um, update to make it quiet. And hopefully we'll see a big difference in quietness. The reason I'm doing it is because it's located here in my man shed. And we're in the middle of COVID. It is now, um, what's the date? January the 16th, um, 2021. And we're in lockdown here in the UK again. And I'm spending a lot more time in here because it basically sort of housebound. The shopping trip is the weekly uh, highlight. So instead of me going to my four pub quizzes a week, I'm stuck in here and uh, a lot more than I used to be. And so I'm watching a lot more TV. So the noise of the fan, if I've got a print going at the same time, is sort of a bit annoying if you're trying to watch something on TV. So I want it as quiet as possible. Okay, so that's just a bit of the background. Uh, sorry to have waffled so much, but uh, it's a habit as of mine as anybody who's watched any of the other videos will know but i will put in the edit line below the red line i'll segment it up so that you can cut all the waffling out and get straight to the uh, installation but before we start fitting the fans um i'll show you them sound measurements i did now i did make a mistake in these i assumed that the fan that was running all the time was the power supply one on the right hand side but it's not it's the motherboard fan on the left that is running 24 7 not 24 7 but whenever you turn the printer on the motherboard fan runs the power supply fan on the right only kicks in when needed due to temperature i'll have a temperature sensor and only kicks in when needed so when it's not doing any work heating up or whatever that is not running so when I'm doing the measurement on the right hand side, I assumed it was running and it probably wasn't. So any sound picked up on the right is just what's being emitted by the uh, motherboard fan on the left, which is running all the time. It may have been running the power supply fan. I don't know at what temperature it was at that, at that stage when I was doing it, because you can't feel the fan inside under the shield. Um, you can with the new fans. But you can't with these, so I don't know whether it was running or not. But the uh, decibel settings still stand true. You will still see the difference between the new fans and the old. So I'll, I'll include them in there. But but any reference in in the video to the the power supply fan running all the time is wrong. That only kicks in when it's needed. So uh, let's have a look at the sound measurements now before we do the uh, the modification. Okay, so this is the noise measurement with the old fans. Both old fans are in. The power supply fan is over here. The power supply is located around here. The noisiest of the two fans is the one placed here on the, the motherboard. Now, I'm talking into uh, my wireless microphone now. And very shortly, I'm going to place it down. And I'll do exact, place it in exactly the same place once I've renewed the fans to, uh, to test uh, how quiet they are. Also, you can see I've got a decibel meter here. And when, when I place the microphone down, I'll obviously uh, stop talking. And you'll see what the, uh, the total noise is with the mic placed right there next to the, uh, the motherboard fan, the old motherboard fan. So as you saw there, it was about 64 to 65 decibels, and that's measuring the, uh, while it's doing a print, it's actually doing one of the parts that we'll be using for this video. And you can hear the, uh, the motors, the X, Y, and Z motors are all very, very quiet. It's just the fans that are generating the noise. So that was the... Um, motherboard fan 
I'm going to place the mag, the uh, this mag down again, and uh, put it in the same spot again once we've renewed them, and uh, we'll uh, see how many decibels it is. So as you can see, you should still be able to hear me over the fan, the mic, I've placed the mic in line with there and the edge of it on the table. So I've now picked up the uh, the radio mic and you can see that's about 52, we were at 52-ish decibels. So right, that was the noise measurements before. Uh, I'll go and print this last part now and film the installation of the fans and everything and then uh, we'll redo the measurements with the new stuff in. So that was the uh, the noise before fitting the Noctuas and uh, we'll go through the installation now and uh, I'm sure you'll be amazed when we measure the noise after. So we'll start with the more difficult of the two fans to replace. So this one is the one on the left, the motherboard fan. Now if you take that screw out first, that will stop the whole thing dropping when you remove the bottom screws as you'll, uh, you'll find out later on. So so just use one of the provided Allen keys and take that screw out there and then turn the printer on its side to gain access to the bottom. So once you turn it on its side and uh, I've got it supported, as you can see there will be a bit of a bubble wrap, just take these three screw out screws out. There's two there at the front, you can see one, and there's one directly below it, you'll notice. And then there's just the uh, the one at the back which I've already taken out actually. So uh, that's a longer one further back there on the right hand side. And uh, once you've taken that cover off, the whole thing just drops down as shown here. So you can see that bottom plate and the fan, uh, all that will be discarded. And uh, you just remove the plug from the motherboard of that fan. Uh, I forgot to take a picture of doing that, so um, I'll just briefly explain. Um, once you've taken that fan out, what you need to do with the book converter. Okay, so I wanted to just add this bit here because it's very, very important. Once you've removed this bottom cover from the motherboard part that we're currently doing, this fan is 24 volts it's not 12 volts like the new noctuas so we need to add this thing which i'll be showing you shortly but if you so what you can do you can either snip this plug off the existing fan if you're just throwing it away but i didn't want to totally throw it away because if i do ever have to send the printer back to amazon or whatever i bought it from amazon because of their great returns um procedure which i've never ever had any problems with but obviously i'd have to put everything back as stock so i didn't really want to damage this fan so i had one of these plugs lying around the little two pin plug now i didn't realize at the time but the wires are connected the opposite way around in the plug i had so if you are using another one always check the polarity that the red goes to the same side if not you'd have to turn these two uh, wires over when you solder it on don't get the uh, polarity wrong now as i said this is a 24 volt fan on here why creality is 24 volt fans i don't know because they're pretty hard to get older particularly quality quiet ones so your new noctua ones are 12 volts so we have to step it down with this and it's called a book converter. So I don't know what you can see here, but on this side we've got in, got positive and negative in. So your motherboard, from your motherboard connection, that goes to here. So that's your 24 volts in. 
And the output to your new Noctua fan is from these two. You've got your negative and your positive here. Once you've connected that up, you need to set the voltage. The output voltage by this blue thing and turning that little tiny brass screw. Just see it there on the top of that. So you need to position this somewhere on your output side. Leave them to blank or connect it to a female plug for your fan and connect a multimeter to them and turn your printer on. I'll show you how I did it just by sticking it to the um, side of the unit with a bit of blue tack and I put a multimeter on these while I was turning that to get a 12 volt out. But if you don't do that, these come set at much higher. I think this was like when I tried it about 19 volts, so that would just blow your new fan. So you need to get that output set at 12 volts. And I didn't have a 12 vo uh, 24 volt source for input to do it on the bench. So the only 24 volt source I had was the printer. So I had to connect it to the printer and sort of dangle it out. And uh, while I'm doing that, once you've got that 12 volt set, turn your printer off and you can go back to the installation of it and on them printed plates from thingiverse there is a little place molded in for you to put that and just attach it with the two screws so again uh, i know it's elementary but i'll just go through again from the motherboard which is 24 volts out the socket that went to your old fan that goes to the input of this plus and minus and then the output of this goes to your new fan okay let's uh, carry on now with the installation so as you can see there it's just dangling out the bottom of the printer i've just stuck it to the front of that drawer with some blue tack just so i can gain access to put my multimeter on it uh, i'll just show it here in close up and then as you can see bottom right hand side i've put a female socket to the uh, the fan the one that comes with the noctuas and you can put your multimeter on the two pins of that quite easily. And uh, that just makes the fan removable instead of hardwiring it in. Okay, so that's the thing in place. You can see the two screws there at the front and the one in the, the resets at the back that we took out. You can use the same screws because these holes on these printed items are inset so the two little tiny screws there and the longer one there you can utilize again i did have a bit bit of a struggle getting it all in them to clear this uh, front lip goes behind this bit you can see hang on that bit there and because this fan is bigger you've got to make sure there is room underneath for the uh, to clear the wiring make sure it doesn't snag any of the wiring and also be careful when you're tightening these screws up only just tighten them up slightly because it is after all plastic this and not as tough as the original metal now this screw here that one that we took out before to uh, remove that plate, remove that cover. There is no facility on these new printed parts for that. There's no like, lugs that that screws into, so there's no actual need for that. Um, it's supported from below fine, so you don't really need that screw. But remember, there's no, uh, no screw goes in there now. And as you can see, That's the new piece and it is lower than the legs. So obviously now with that flush against the thing, I would be getting no cooling whatsoever. So I'm going to raise this up temporarily on blocks of wood to raise it up to give it air underneath. And I'm going to source some uh, printed legs to raise it up here. So you can see there on the left hand side, the current one we're working on, the motherboard fan. 
um, all in place. You can see the power supply one's done as well, uh, which we're going to do now. And uh, obviously took that photo at the end of the job. Okay, so that's the motherboard part done. And uh, like I said, that is the trickier of the two because you've got to fit that book converter. So this next one is the power supply and it's a straight swap, 12 volt for 12 volt fan. Um, now I did forget to film the actual removal of the power supply itself, but it's pretty straightforward. It's just uh, like before, it's just a cover underneath. Uh, you take that off and then that exposes the power supply and then you can just take the lid off the power supply. So we start this instruction with the power supply already out and uh, the lid off it. So uh, let's have a look at that now. So that's what the power supply looks like with that cover off and the fan just dangling on there. You can see it's still connected there in the middle. And that's a close up of it, still uh, connected, still the existing fan, still connected on the motherboard. Now I did find this uh, tricky to remove knowing which bit to sort of squeeze in it didn't uh, seem to want to come out and i didn't want to pull too hard or pull the uh, socket out of the motherboard so if you orientate you know at some sort of pin nose pliers like that that's the bit you need to sort of squeeze it in the direction you need to squeeze it in and you'll find it uh, should pop out reasonably easy uh, as you see here this is your new knock to a fan and that has the th three pin pwm style plug on it and we're only going to be using the two pin one now the metal uh, piece you can see there on the extreme right is the one we've just taken off the cr6 now i haven't got any two pin plugs and like i said with the other same as the other i wanted to keep that intact in case i ever put it back to stock uh, configuration so the only two pin plug i had lying around was the one there off the uh, the left hand metal uh, piece which is the old bottom bit of my old um, CR10 mini which I put quiet fans in about two and a half three years ago so I'm going to snip the one off that now after I'd snipped it off being a Creality part I just assumed it was wired the same as the uh, Creality fan on this it's the same fan exactly and I just assumed that the red and black were the same way around um, but Again, I shouldn't have assumed that. They were opposite. Again, just like that spare plug I put on the other that I had lying around. Even though this was off a Creality fan, it was wired up the wrong way around. So again, if you're snipping it off an old Creality fan or using a plug lying around, check that the red and the black go to the same pins as the one you're taking off. If you're snipping that white wire, you can obviously just use that... Uh, that fan but uh, double double check because uh, when I put it on it just didn't fire up even though the power supply was getting quite warm the fan just wasn't kicking in and it was because um, I'd got them wires the wrong way around as soon as I pumped back the right way around as soon as it got to the right temperature it kicked in as it should do so here's the new power supply in place um, be very very careful when you're screwing these screws in to this plastic uh, new piece um, i did mine out of pla uh, it might be better using ptg um, i've never ever used ptg i've tried it once on my old printer i'm going to give it a go again on this and uh, but i wanted it black i only had translucent red so uh, it probably be better with PETG because I believe it is a bit tougher but one of these sort of started to crack and creak so make sure you have the screws lined up perfectly and uh, you have exactly the right screwdriver not put any downwards force on it it'll crack the plastic and I've just run a, a seam of tape over there to hold it but it's absolutely solid so the two wires that before ran across the tape to the top of the power supply you just took them out of the way they're not coming into touch touch with anything there and these two pieces that one and that one are what go around here to fill the gaps so we'll put them on now and i'll show you the finished thing 
Okay, so this is the completed job. You can see this one here. This side is the power supply. Now the old power supply, that was, you can see the difference in fan size. So you can see the uh, the new Noctua fan, apart from being much better quality and silent is bigger. The bigger the fans, the uh, quieter they are. And you can see the cooling on this printed part is a lot better. Very small fins on that one. So that's the power supply. And then the motherboard one. Again is here. That was the old motherboard one. See the difference in fan size there. And also it's got, as you can see, quite a small mesh over it there, so that's a restriction to airflow. And the new one has got much more cooling, so it's even just mesh over these. Uh, it's mesh even, as you can see, over the side, cooling slots. So I've just put this bit of tape over these two screws. The screws are used to hold in the book converter inside. Uh, we're a bit long so the heads are just coming through so I'll, I'll shave them off with my Dremel at some stage. I've just put that on now. But yeah, that's the position inside of the book converter. That's to convert the 24 volts down to 12 volts for the new uh, Noctua fans. And that's where that sits inside and there is a little bracket made on the printed part for that. And of course these are the legs you'll need to print yourself some or some means of raising it up because they do stick lower than before so these are actually lower than the, the short rubber legs but they're fine even though on Thingiverse you're supposed to print them out of uh, TPU I don't have any TPU so I've just printed them out of normal PLA and uh, you've still got the cushioning because you've still got the rubber pad it's a very hard rubber pad on there and I've also stuck some bits of uh, non-stick non-slip stick on um, tape on the bottom to stop them skidding around so they're ideal and they just go on there like that and they raise it easily enough so that uh, that concludes the the actual fitting of the fans so let's now have a listen and measure them with the dB meter. And uh, like I say, you will, uh, well, you won't be amazed because I know you know what's coming, but uh, you'll be really pleased with the result. And like I say, you can probably hear already, it's uh, way quieter. But I'm now going to place the mic in the same place. Unclip it from my shirt. Sorry about any clunking and that. It's uh, I'm not using the dead cat on this, so any popping and that. Uh, I forgot to put it on on the first test, so I've left it off on this. So apologies for any uh, popping and that. But so I'm going to place this mic now in exactly the same place as I did before, and you'll be able to audibly hear the difference. And I'll show you what the dB meter is registering. And like I said, we'll test this side first. So as you saw there, it's way wet and hand, you should have heard as well, much, much quieter. In fact, the only noise really now is all the noise from the, the hot end. Um, I did do, I'll show you later on, a, a little uh, cover 
for the, the front fan, the cooling fan, but it's mainly the, the park cooling fan on the side that makes most of the noise. The two fans we've replaced are just totally silent. So uh, we'll now set up for the uh, test on the, uh, the power supply side. Okay, so we're doing this test now because the printer is raised up now on these extension legs to give it air clearance underneath for the new fan boxes. Again, printed these, they were off for Thingiverse. I've also raised the dB meter and I'll be putting the mic on uh, on this extra leg shortly. But as I've just explained in that head to head, I did make a mistake on the first video. When I measured the sound, when I was measuring this side, which is the power supply side, I assumed that the fan would be running all the time, but it isn't. It's the motherboard fan that is running all the time, the, the one over here. Um, the power supply only kicks in when um, it's, it's doing work, it's like heating up or whatever. And because I'd finished that print and it was, it was cooled down the power supply would have been off so I wasn't actually measuring the noise of the power supply fan I was measuring just the noise of the continuing the running motherboard fan but this time the fan is running because I've got if you look here I've got the bed up to temperature and the nozzle up to temperature and I can confirm on this one it's easy I can touch the the blades on this if you listen Don't know whether you heard that, that was me just touching the blade. So I can confirm it is running, the fan, and it is totally silent. But like I said, I wish I'd have uh, realised that and then I could have measured the actual fan noise the first time around. But uh, you'll still see there is a drop in noise. When I put the microphone down, you will, uh, you'll hear the difference and I'll, I'll show you. So as you saw there, it dropped to uh, from 52 to about 42. But like I say, I was I would have got a higher reading than 52 last time uh, if the power supply fan was running. But uh, you can uh, definitely take it from me. It is totally different. It's like totally silent now. I can't hear anything apart from the the hot end fan. So while I was on Thingiverse printing these other parts, I noticed a hot end fan cover or duct. So I printed that off. It's a silencing duct. It doesn't block it. It looks and think blocks it, but as you see, there's grooves, air grooves there, and it's open at the top. So when it's in place, there's plenty of room for the air to go. And you put four little magnets, which I haven't done yet, in them uh, things and just clip it over. Now, that's to sort of silence this front um, hot end fan. But if anything, it's the part cooling fan, which spins up when it's printed to, to actually cool a print that makes most of the noise. But we're going to put this on now, and I'll set the tripod and the dB meter up again, just to show you the difference in, in noise. It does reduce it slightly, but like I say, it's, I think it's totally livable with the noise from this. It's the two underneath fans, power supply and motherboard that are the, the culprits of all the noise. But um, I'll put this on as well and uh, it'll just probably drop a couple of decibels is my guess. So I'll just set up the tripod now and we'll measure that. Okay, so we'll measure the, uh, the noise reduction from this now. I'll also place the mic on the, on the bed of the uh, printer so you should have hear of any difference.
So yeah, as you saw there, it went down from like 53 to 49, which was actually more than I was expecting. Um, I'll try and do a bit of editing as well so you can hear the, the difference, but like I say, it's not that noisy, that fan. If somebody could develop the same sort of thing for the uh, the, the part fan on this side, that'd be great. So uh, there we go. So I think you'll agree, uh, definitely it was a worthwhile upgrade fitting them fans. Like I say, it is now totally silent. I can sit in my room watching TV films or just surfing the net or whatever with it just a few feet away from me and I hardly even know it's going. So uh, absolutely great. So like I said, the two main fans we did, they're the culprit for the noise. The little thing I just showed you just then on top, the cover for the um, front fan, the um, hot end fan, less so, but uh, it looks good as well. And uh, like I say, it's main, most of the noise is from that side park cooling fan. So who knows for the future, I may get a little... Um, Knock two or one for that, like I put on me me old CR10 Mini, and uh, but for now I, I can live with the noise. So while I was printing uh, all them uh, parts, the legs and uh, the other bits, um, I did a load more for it on um, from Thingiverse. There's the wire support at the back, some little Bowden tube supports, uh, an inset for the drawer. So. Uh, before we do the uh, final closing, I'll uh, I'll just show you them now. Okay, so these this is the final uh, completed bit with all the extra bits I've printed for it. So a cover there for the screen, the uh, cover I showed you earlier on with the sound test, the clip, and cover there. I've since done these gap fillers. Most of these are just uh, cosmetic but they do serve a purpose that stops stuff going in the slots. Um, that bit there, a vertical part, is uh, was a great idea. It holds your cable as you can see up out of the way because before it was congregating at the back there. And uh, you can see the legs are printed. It's raised up on legs. I've got on there just holding up the, uh, the spool holder. Now you can hear how quiet it is. I'm going to turn the microphone, take the microphone off and show you. So yeah, most of this is bling, and it's not to everybody's taste, I know. Not everybody likes the bling and stuff, but I do. I like RGB on computers, and a lot hate it, as you can see. I've got it on that, my observatory computer, and I've got it on my main PC, so I do, I do like a bit of bling. So, yeah, that's it. Just printing some more of these uh, cable clips in case I need any, and these are quite a good idea. They're better than the uh, the little twist toggle things that you get with it. And another thing I printed was this insert for the drawer. You can see that uh, there holds all the stuff in, including your uh, scraper. As you'll have realised the foam insert that you get with it isn't much good actually once you've unpacked them but that holds everything uh, really nice. So. so there, these are a lot of these things I printed with my old CR10 Mini but quite pleased with that skull dice roller I did with this 
CR6, that was 20, 27 hours I think that was. That's the longest print ever. Although this in total probably took the longest, but it was printed in many smaller parts. It's a spaceship from a 70s TV series here in the, uh, the UK called Blake 7, which I was really into, and I put some uh, flashing LEDs in the in it there. So in total that's probably my longest print. So there you have it. I hope this video has been of some use if you're contemplating doing the same thing. And uh, as I said at the beginning, I do realise this printer is quite new on the market and it's had a lot, far too many for a new new release printer issues. Um, like I said, the power switch, I don't think mine's affected because it does feel very clicky and I've had no sparks or anything from it. Um, I have got the version 452 motherboard. But there's one, there's one after that, the 453, and I believe there's another one after that. And there's a third-party one you can get. Um, I've read about some of the issues with the USB port um, shorting out and again sparking and blowing up your computer if you if you plug a lead in. I've never, ever used USB, even on my old CR10. Uh, I just do the things on my PC, put it onto an SD card, walk over to the printer and use the SD card. But I haven't ruled it out for the future, so I'll have to do a bit of research again about that. But rest assured, I'm not using any USB on it uh, until that is definitely sorted anyway. So I'm hoping that it proves reliable. Like I said, I've only had it a couple of weeks, but during that couple of weeks, I've used it every day for hours and hours a day. And it's done quite a lot of prints, including that 27-hour skull. And so far, it hasn't... Uh, screwed up at all so fingers crossed i'll carry on with the uh, many many months or years of whatever of uh, reliable use from it and there, there's always the option to upgrade with all these new motherboards if i do need to now i have looked up and read about the new um community firmware which features a load of extra features and i plan on doing that as well if i do that i will also do a video on, on how to do that at each stage, how to format your SD card and how to update the screen and the motherboard and so on. So uh, keep a look out for that. Uh, hopefully that will be good within the next month. I want to give it a good try first beforehand, um, see if any faults do develop. And then probably when I've been using it reliably for about a month or two, I'll do the uh, community firmware upgrade. But um, I'm sat here in peace and quiet now whenever it's printing and uh, I'm happy I did the fan models. So if you do want to subscribe, click the little shed icon here and uh, I'll get I'll have loads more, uh, mainly reviews on tools and stuff from, from Lidl's and various other places. Reviews on uh, updates for the MG ZS EV electric car and I might do the old 3D printing one as well. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.